Hey everyone, John Deere here from John Deere's Embroidery Legacy. In our Hatchfacts group, a question came up, can you actually add something onto an ESA font? And the answer is, of course you can. So you want to stay tuned and I'll show you how. <laughs> Now in this example, I'm using the free Brittany 20 millimeter font that can be found on our Wilcom Embroidery Font site. And this will load into the Hatch platform, the commercial Wilcom platform, as well as the Genomi version 5 software. So these files load directly into a folder within your program files, and then you can call up whatever font you want, and they are object based. So I'm going to type in the word free, and you're going to see that I can make this as big or small as I want. That's really irrelevant at this point. But this one letter here kind of looks like the R is missing. Now, I do want to let you know that this is the way the font was actually done in the first place. When I created this, I just worked from the artwork that was originally done. Now, when I look at this now and I hit the H key, I can see that I am able to move all of the letters over. And because they join closest point, it will actually keep a, uh, you know, a, a stitch going across until it gets beyond a certain measurement and then it will register a trim and a jump. Now, if I'm dealing with a font like this, which is a script, usually what I like to try to do is kind of have these letters go underneath of the first so that it all kind of flows and stitches out perfectly. But if I look at this one here, it does kind of look like there's something missing. So I'm going to bring this relatively close, just like that. And what I want to do is I want to add a element to this uh, design. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just so that we can see it on screen. And I'm going to add a uh, you know piece right here from the F to the R. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I need to break this apart. And if I look right now, I have the objects and it's showing as one object with all of the letters together. If I go to my lettering and I click on break apart, then it starts to break apart these objects. And if I select them all again, I can break them apart one more time. Now every object within these letters is completely broken apart. And what I can do now is I can go to my digitize and I'm going to go to digitize block. I'm going to choose a satin stitch and I'm going to come right here and I'm just going to add a little piece and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, but I'm just going to put a little piece right here, come right to this point here, and then come into the next object, something like that. And now I can see that I've added a line, and that kind of does look better. Now it did add it right at the bottom of the object, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move it right to this point here. Now if I look at this and I see the uh, sequence in which it sews, I can see that it is breaking apart and putting a couple trims within these objects here. And I'm going to fix that by resequencing these a little bit. I probably wanted to stitch this object first, so I'm going to move that one up so that it's there. And I'm actually going to move this one down just a little bit so that it's actually closer here, closest point here as opposed to here. Because when I take these objects, I'm going to grab the first one all the way down to the one that I created, all of these objects here have you know, jumps and trims, unnecessary jumps and trims in here. Now that I've grabbed all those, I'm going to go to my branching tool and I'm going to tell it to start right at the top here and end over here. And there it's taken away all of the jumps and trims and it has actually branched it so that the objects are you know, flowing within each other. And that's going to look much, much better. So if I take this now and I look at how it sews, it's literally going to do each of the pieces all the way down and then finish on this side here as it branches together. Now the only catch is you do need the digitizing module to be able to add on the objects and create them exactly to your specifications. But with a few quick steps, you can actually modify any font that you want. Thanks for watching. To make your embroidery life easier, hit the subscribe button below to be notified of new tips and tricks videos, giveaways, and more. Plus take advantage of our digitizer's cheat sheet and get a free embroidery design in the links below. The next step of your embroidery legacy starts here with ours.